Texas, the Lone Star State, and the biggest in the contiguous US. We are Sorted Food, and the four of us are on a trip from the UK to find out if everything really is bigger in Texas. So oh this is it. Oh my God! So we're traveling to the state's biggest cities to explore the things that made the food scene in Texas massive. To help us scratch the surface, our production team, along with the help of Texan locals, have lined up a number of challenges to help us immerse ourselves in this truly epic state. Houston, the largest city in Texas and the most ethically diverse metropolitan area in the United States. Within this city is a melting pot of cultures, creating a rich tapestry of traditions and cuisines known not only for its association with space exploration, nature, and of course, incredible food. We are in this massive city for 48 hours, and the four of us will be going head to head, taking on challenges across Houston. With Ben and I currently at the top of the leaderboard, it's time for the scores to reset and us to indulge in Houston's foodie fusion. Oh, hang on a sec, I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing, I'm excited <laughs> to be here. No, I've got a text. Welcome to Houston, AKA Hustle City. Your first challenge will help you discover why. And then I've been sent a pin. Houston has been enriched by one of the largest Vietnamese populations in the US. And this is reflected in the city's innovative Vietnamese food scene. First up, we met Christine Ha a multi-award winning chef and the founder of some of Houston's top restaurants. Welcome to The Blind Goat. This is uh, my first restaurant and I have a dish on the menu that is called crawfish and garlic noodles. It's actually one of our most popular dishes. So for this challenge, we needed to cook up Christine's famous crawfish and noodles, a dish synonymous with Houston. With the ingredients provided, the rest is up to us. So this is going to be pretty easy. Oh, right. <laughs> I will talk about the ingredients and then we'll have you cook. The Blind Goat is a restaurant that I started where I want to feature lesser known street foods of Vietnam, but also put my own fun personal twist on it, being someone who's Vietnamese American born in the US. So there's elements of Texas cuisine and Gulf Coast cuisine threaded throughout the menu. After being diagnosed with an autoimmune disease in 2007, Christine was told that she would eventually lose her sight. However, just five years later, she went on to become the first ever blind contestant on MasterChef and the overall winner of the competition in 2012. Uh, the fun twist that I'm gonna put on this challenge for you is I will tell you the ingredients, but I'm not gonna give you the ratio. So I'm gonna have you test your palate and try to figure out what you think will taste good for the sauce and the end okay. resulting okay. dish. Okay. Okay, so you've got garlic. Let's chop up some garlic. Do you like garlic? Uh, love I garlic. love it. You can never have too much garlic. You can. <laughs> <laughs> Superb stuff, <start>, Barry. <laughs> Done, chef. Oh, it smells great. I think it would be nice to have some color in the dish. Mm. I'm in the presence of greatness, so I, I need to up my game. Oh, you've gone for fancy spring onions. I've gone for angles. Lemon. Zest. What next, chef? Uh, so next you will be making your sauce. So we have fish sauce, oyster sauce, some sugar, some granulated sugar, and then some Maggie sauce. Is this chili oil part of it as well? If there's chili oil, you can use it if you would oh, like. Nice. So we're kind of put out some ingredients that you can also maybe not necessarily go in, in it, but if you think you can improve on my dish, then feel free to, <laughs> <laughs> feel free to use additional ingredients. So cool. Oh no, what are you going for straight away? You going for oyster? I'm not telling you. What else are you adding? Lemon juice. Okay, getting fancy. Oh. And then once you're happy with your sauce, we're gonna move you to the stove so you can start cooking. There's always a balance of texture and temperature that I think often get discounted when you eat food, like people always think about flavor balancing, but you need to have contrasting textures and temperatures as well. So I feel like Vietnamese food is able to take very humble ingredients and elevate them and make them taste delicious. With Barry and I busy in the kitchen, Jamie and Ben went to Houston's farmer's market. With 20,000 square feet full of fresh ingredients, it's been a staple in the city since 1958. 
Everywhere you look, another new ingredient in terms of lots of Vietnamese herbs and spices, but also lots of Mexican influence. So lots of ancho chilies, yeah. dry chilies, all types. Of I've these. never been to a farmer's market like this before with so much variety. Yeah. So many different cultures all coming together at once. The smells are amazing. Look at these dried chilies. Fancy spoon. Inspired by what we had seen so far, we were keen to delve a little deeper into what makes Houston so unique and explore how locals are taking fusion to another level. We've come to a restaurant called Crawfish and Noodles where we have ordered neither crawfish nor noodles. But two other Viet Cajun dishes, uh, Dungeness crab and sausage, egg and shrimp on rice. I almost lose where the Viet and Cajun crossover happens because it's wonderful Vietnamese spicing, mm. Cajun Creole ingredients, but blended in a way that feels like it was always meant to be. Yeah, and that's got such a lovely kick of heat to it. It doesn't slap you in the face. No, it's, but it's just It's a mix that you didn't know that you were missing. And I thought the shrimp was sweet, but I'm looking forward to Dungeness crab, that sweet crab meat with the same spicing. If we can hack into it, it's gonna be yummy. Where they're this small, they're a lot more fiddly but the prize is worth it because the meat is so sweet when they're smaller. Really succulent. But still with that Cajun Viet spice. It's not attractive food to eat, <laughs> but it's damn tasty. <laughs> okay, what next? All right, fellows, so now you're at the stove. We're gonna actually cook the dish. What you wanna do is turn on your stove to like medium, medium high, and then you're going to add all the butter, melt it, and then saute the onion, garlic, that is a lot, that is quite a quite lot of butter. Small, quite a small pan. <laughs> also, make sure you know where the fire extinguisher is. Oh, <laughs> oh. <all time. laughs> Sounds well, good. Come on. Safety in the kitchen, I'm mate. I'm getting in the mood, mate. Garlic in. Release the aromas. Once fragrant, let's move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man with the garlic. We've got loads of parmesan. Oh, I'm falling behind. Parmesan next. Where's my chili? Ah! Service! Oh! Smells good. Service. <laughs> Don't sound excited for service. <laughs> All right, it smells great. I hope it looks great. We'll take this out into the dining room and I'll have a taste. Oh, okay, I'm nervous. <laughs> For my dish, I went big on the things that I love. Garlic, butter, and parmesan. As for the sauce and everything else, it was just guesswork. It smells great. I definitely smell the lemon zest. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit so I don't get a mouthful mm -hmm. of lemon zest. Let's see, what was the point? Now it looks exactly like mine. <laughs> <laughs> Punchy? <laughs> That's actually quite good. I definitely taste the heat. You put some chilies in there. My only, I would say, improvement that I would do on this dish is maybe make it a little bit less saucy, but otherwise the flavor is well balanced. Interesting. Okay, thank you. <sighs> Wanna talk me through what your So uh, I went was? more for balance instead of strong flavors. So hopefully you'll be able to taste everything. Also smells good. This dish sounds a little less wet. Mm -hmm. This is hard, honestly. Also very well balanced. I would have to say this is pretty close to how we do it here. Both very excellent. I think you should both be proud of yourselves, the fact that I just threw you in that kitchen and just gave you ingredients with no ratios and we did this in a very short amount of time. But if I had to pick, <laughs> I will have to say this one is slightly better. Oh, well, well done. Nice. Thank, Thank you for that. That was, yeah, that was so much fun. Um, <laughs> I'm still nervous to try the real thing, though. Yeah. OK. Oh. Now that is finesse. <laughs> I was feeling good about myself until that. Oh, no. <laughs> well, gentlemen, this is our dish that Chef Patrick kindly made for you to look at and taste. So this is our uh, crawfish and garlic noodles from the blind goat. Mm. Well, firstly, it tastes a thousand times better. <laughs> <laughs>
You can really taste garlic, garlic really taste garlic, the, garlic, the lemon garlic. zest. And the sauce is there and it's perfect. Mm. I think it was mm. probably too strong in our, mm -hmm. in our dishes. Now we've tasted yeah. what it should really taste like. It's so fresh for something that's buttery and, mm -hmm. and cheesy. Mm -hmm. We were miles off, you were too kind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. With the head-to-head -head complete and the scores now at 1-0, Barry and I travelled across the city to Three Brothers Bakery for their 23 and a half pound pump apple cake, a local favourite. Something so crazy, we had to see it for ourselves. So oh this is it. Oh my god! No! <laughs> oh no! We could put it on the scale and go see how much it weighs, but... <laughs> Did you know pretty, you this bit? <laughs> So the pump a capel started as a joke. This really started as a joke. But basically what we do is we take the pie, we, we bake the pie, okay? And after it cools, then we take it and put it in, in, in the batter. You don't chop the pie up. You put the pie in there. We put, put the whole pie in. in. The and then we put more cake batter on top of it, and then we bake it. And then we use cream cheese icing, and then we do this caramel drizzle with the uh, pecans on the bottom. Yeah, so that's the pump of apple. <laughs> Standing at a height of 11 inches, the pump apple contains three pies, a pumpkin, a pecan, and an apple pie baked into a cake. Right, we've held off I still this. can't believe what we're about to eat. <laughs> no. That is outrageous. This is the most Texas cake I've ever seen in size and concept. So I've gone for the chocolate pecan pie, cream cheese frosting, and I think I've got a little bit of cinnamon and apple as well. <laughs> I'm going for apple pie in a cake. <laughs> it's actually really good. When you hear the concept, you just presume that it's just one big gimmick. The first ingredient in this cake are three delicious pies. pies. <laughs> yeah. I've got a better idea. What? Let's eat pie overlooking the sky line. What a day. What a day. With the sun setting over Houston, a city of fascinating fusions and inspiring stories, there was one last place still to visit. Club No Miners is famous for its frozen margaritas, gaining its vibrant colour from blue curacao liqueur. Mix that with live Mexican music, great food and friends, and we had ourselves the perfect cocktail to end the day. Day two exploring Houston, Texas. And today we'll be visiting the coastal city of Galveston, a beautiful area southeast of Houston. And with a score standing at 1-0 to Ben and I, with more challenges ahead, there is work to be done. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the fajita, or tacos la carbon, and it started here by Mama Nympha. Born in 1924, Mama Nympha was widely regarded with popularizing the fajita amongst Houstonians, and throughout her life had a huge influence on the city's food scene. Her legacy lives on through her restaurant. The menu says, this is the best Mexican food in Texas, since Texas was in Mexico. <laughs> And it's that real hybrid of, of Tex and Mex combined. Mm. They have classic Mexican dishes on the menu, um, but also kind of what has become this whole new style of cuisine. I think for a lot of restaurants that have got great history, that tends to be what they play on and that's what keeps them going. Yeah. But Mum and Ninfa passed away in 2001 and actually the restaurant has gone from strength to strength even after that. So yes, you can still get all the classic stuff. Which is brilliant. But the new chef, James Beard Vine List, like, He's doing incredible things that's taking the restaurant to new and exciting places as well. Obviously we have fajitas in the UK, but this is worlds away. It's so balanced as well. Mm. Beans, rice, loads of fresh salsa, guac. You've got the flour tortilla, the meat, which is chunky, chunky bits cooked over like a wood fire. Tastes so good. 
With Ben and Jamie enjoying a leisurely start to the day, Barry and I jumped in the car and headed 50 miles south to Galveston, a popular vacation spot due to its great seafood, sandy beaches and tranquil waters. So we thought we'd get the best view possible. Hey, I'm Captain Rob on Third Coast Paracel. We're fixing to send the guys up out in Galveston East Bay. We operate right out of Stingery Restaurant Marina in Crystal Beach, Texas. Let's see how these British get on. We'll get them high in the sky, baby. Oh my gosh! Well, I, I wasn't nervous. I'm not nervous. <laughs> Using the biggest sail, everything's bigger in Texas. I don't know what's about to happen. Here we go. See you later. Oh! Yeah, but I feel like I'm I feel like I'm balancing on an elastic band. No, no, no. Yeah, baby. Woo! He said he said two percent, two 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 percent chop. That was amazing. What a sensation. St. Arnold Brewery is the oldest craft brewery in all of Texas, so it was an absolute must for us to try. I think pretty much every restaurant that we've been to in Houston has had St. Arnold beers on tap or in bottles, so we thought we'd come to the Mother Hen house. Supposedly Texas's oldest craft brewery, and they take a lot of influence from other things in the area, like the tropical fruits we've seen in the farmer's market in this, which is a guava IPA, and it's yummy. What is evident is people just come here to hang out for quite a long time. They've got the sport on, it's a chill out garden. I like it. Evans, what sport is it? The sport. <laughs> it's a bit like rounders, isn't it? It's a bit like rounders. The brewery also teamed up with an artist to create uh, a beer and the design on the can. And as a result, they also thought, let's make some art cards. How cool are these? That one's definitely Ebers. No, what, well, does that believe you with the ice cream? Yeah, I'll have the ice cream. It's Barry's. I could do that, I could do that. Very cool. With parasailing done, these hungry Brits needed a big old pile of fish and chips. Well, as close as. What do two Brits get when they come to Galveston? Fish and chips. But these are local fish and chips. We've got loaded fries. And they're out flipping rageous. Sauteed Alaskan crab, lobster meat, golf shrimp, Parmesan Cajun butter sauce, <laughs> chipotle aioli, avocado, queso, and fresh chives. They are the poshest, dirty fries I think I've ever <laughs> seen. And while we're here, we couldn't not go local and have seared red snapper from just over there. 1400 degrees, they sear that. And it's a thing of beauty. Let's get stuck in. I mean, they are some decadent fries. Oh, that is so zesty and green and flaky. Good meaty fish, that. One of the things I hate about local food is that this isn't local to me. Yeah, <laughs> it's not available. I can't get this in my life. That is a lovely view. Oh, I could get used to this very quickly. What a great day. Amazing. Oh, OK. Back in Houston and with the teams back together, it's time for the big fusion challenge. Oh, hang on a sec. Here we go. Oh, another one of these. This is Host International Food Hall and the location of your final challenge in Houston. To pay tribute to the multicultural fusion of food in the city, you must combine multiple dishes from vendors to create your own fusion dishes, which will be judged by the production team. Right, teams, Evans, let's we, go. We've got this nailed. Which way? We'll see you on the roof. Right, let's, let's do a recce. Let's take a wander around, see our options. Yeah, but can we get something to snack on whilst we okay. look at our options? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. The Kenyans. South American from the Andes, like cheese sticks. Mm. Cheese and bread. What's that? 
jollof rice. We're, we're going to need a base. We're going to need a vehicle, aren't we? Margarita pizza. We've got a base. Half. Half and half. Half for Izzy. Oh, yes. Yes. So it's basically rice and spice and sauce inside bread. I just think it needs uh, like a fruity tang to it. And I've got an oh, idea. Exactly. Come with me. I've got two fingers. Really a strategy for Tom. A strategy for Izzy. So for Izzy, I'm thinking Asian and spicy. OK, yeah. Right, right, right. She loves like Thai, it, right? she I loves like it, like Vietnamese, it. she loves. What does Tom like? What do you want? What if we bought one of those and let it melt? And then use it as a... But with the tremoy. Yeah. Yeah. If you had... <laughs> right. Did you ever have got almost the cucumber writer yeah. vibe going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. With the burrata and the tremoy, West African and Indian, with Mexican. I think we've won this. <laughs> <laughs> we've actually won this. Yeah, can we have one of those cucumber chamoy paletas, please? I'm thinking on Tom's side of the pizza, we go Mediterranean kebab, heavy on the meat. Yeah. But for the sauce, we take a trip to India. India. So parathas are amazing. These are from Pakistan. They're basically flatbreads with hundreds and hundreds of flaky layers. So it's bready, but it's also sort of crispy, almost like a pastry or like layers in a croissant. No one's put a melted paletta into a paratha with, with jollof, jollof rice. <laughs> I've lost Jamie, where's Jamie? Oh, Jamie, you are you did? I mean, I couldn't find you anywhere. We have a lot of food. Right, we'll start. There's a logic to this. Inspired by the popularity of your very own paella burrito. So instead of a flour tortilla, we're taking you to Pakistan nice. with a paratha. Then we'll take you to the shores of West Africa, where we have a jollof rice-based oh. dish. So this is spicy, it's got veg, it's got peppers yeah, throughout, yeah. it's got chickpeas. And then instead of the creaminess in a burrito Ooh. of sour cream or guac, a West African coconut curry with pinto beans. I know what you're thinking. Yeah. This could do with like maybe a chutney or a cucumber writer or something. We I have was, been I was wondering. slowly defrosting this paletta. Look at that. Ah, fusion, fusion right there. Final fusion. This is our dish, Houston there's no longer a problem. So for our dish, we thought not only do we want to celebrate the diversity of the cuisine, the people, the cultures that we've seen here in Houston. The, the challenge we have set. Yeah, but also we want to celebrate the diversity of Izzy and Tom's tongues. Now our pizza, already sliced, and we're gonna split it in two. The first half, we've got Mediterranean chicken shawarma. Is that sumac onions? Yeah. Sumac mm -hmm. onions. Yep. And then we're going over to India for an Indian coconut curry. This is called moily sauce. Um, and to finish, we got some spiced masala nuts. Now, the second half, we wanted, we wanted to have a kick. So, what we've gone for is calamari. And then there is hot honey walnut shrimp, tapir fried with candied walnuts. Now, are we gonna make it into a calzone? No. <laughs> <laughs> Once we had assembled our fantastic fusion dishes, it was over to the toughest of judges, our production team, to choose a winner. So, after tasting and conferring with one another, it was time for the results of today's challenge. Dish A, we liked how it was put together and the attempt to enhance the pie of burrito, although it needed some crunch and an extra kick. Dish B, visually interesting. And using the pizza base to create two dishes in one catered to us. And the winners are... Barry and Jamie! No, you're <laughs> kidding me! Yes. We've obviously learned more about the diversity in the culture of Houston. We couldn't lose. The food downstairs is all delicious. So we just put more of it on a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Overlooking one of the best views in Houston, our 48 hours in the city came to a close with the final scores tied at 1-1. And for once, we didn't mind sharing the points. The locals here refer to Houston as Hustle City due to the creativity and work ethic of its inhabitants. And for us, that's what makes the food scene here outstanding.